Welcome to the Singer World of Sewing, standing for innovation, superior quality, and remarkable quality for money. Singer has become a household name around the globe in its rich company history, a name linked to sewing like no other brand. From fashion to trendy accessories, cozy home textiles, or personalized giftware, Sewing enthusiasts worldwide enjoy innovative concepts that make sewing easy and great fun. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Singer sewing machine. This instructional DVD is about getting to know your sewing machine and the basics of machine sewing. You'll see how easy it is to achieve professional results on any of your sewing projects. Let's get started. Your new Singer sewing machine is equipped with stitch programs that cope with all modern fabric types. All stitch types are shown on the front and can easily be selected with fast selection dials. Let's get started. These machines certainly stand up to their name of heavy duty. You can sew multiple layers of denim, canvas and leather with ease. You will need to change the needle to a size 16 plus denim needle for the denim and canvas. For the leather, we recommend a leather needle and you may benefit from the use of an optional Teflon foot. These heavy duty machines, although lightweight, are quite the workhorse. With a sewing speed of 1100 stitches per minute, they are suitable for the home sewer to sew anything from clothing, home decor and extra heavy weight fabrics. You will be surprised how far you can push the boundaries with the Singer heavy duty machine. Connecting your sewing machine. The foot controller plugs into the side of the machine and then into the wall socket. Turn your machine on here with the power switch. Free arm flatbed conversion. Your machine can be used as a flatbed or converted to a free arm. It converts into a slim free arm machine in seconds, simply by removing the accessory tray. To remove the accessory tray, hold it firmly and pull it off to the left. The free arm area makes sewing hard to reach places or tubular areas like cuffs or trouser legs extremely easy. The accessory tray includes a compartment for convenient storage of all machine accessories. For ordinary sewing, keep the feed dogs up. For freehand embroidery, sewing on buttons and darning, drop the feed dogs. Remove the accessory tray. The feed dog lever is at the back of the machine. To lower the feed dogs, slide the lever to the right. To raise the feed dogs, slide the lever to the left. The feed dogs will come up when you start to sew. Presser foot lifter different positions. The presser foot lifter lets you set the presser foot in three different positions. In lowest position for sewing, in center position for placing the fabric under the presser foot and removing it, and for changing presser feet, in highest position for removing extremely thick fabric layers. Changing presser feet. Changing presser feet is incredibly easy. Make sure the needle is in the up position. Raise the presser foot lifter and push the presser foot release button to remove the foot. Place the desired foot on the needle plate, aligning the presser foot pin with the foot holder. Lower the presser foot lifter to snap on the foot. Changing the needle. It's absolutely important to insert the needle correctly. That means with the flat side toward the back. To change the needle, raise the needle bar to its highest position. Loosen the needle clamp screw with the flat screwdriver. Remove the needle and insert the new needle. Push the needle up as far as it can go and tighten the needle clamp screw with the screwdriver. Different types of needles are available for different types of fabrics. 
stretch needles, for example, with a ballpoint for easy handling of stretch materials, or an extra strong jeans needle for convenient sewing of denims. Needles come in various sizes too. A smaller number means a thinner needle which is used for lighter weight fabrics. A larger number means the needle is thicker. Larger needles are best for medium or heavy weight fabrics. Needles should be changed regularly. It is recommended to use Singer brand needles in your Singer sewing machine. To wind the bobbin, first place the thread on the spool pin and secure it with the spool pin cap. Slip the thread under the thread guide, maintaining tension on the thread with your right hand and wind it clockwise around the tension disc. Put the thread end through the bobbin like this from the center and then out through the hole on the bobbin. Place the bobbin on the bobbin winding spindle. Push the bobbin to the right. This will declutch the hand wheel which means that your needle won't go up and down while you're winding the bobbin. Hold the end of the thread and then step on the foot controller. The bobbin will begin to fill. Stop to trim the thread tail. Continue to fill the bobbin. It will stop when it is full. Push both the bobbin and spindle to the left. This will re-engage the needle automatically for sewing. Now, remove the bobbin from the bobbin winding spindle, then cut the thread. Bobbin insertion. Raise the needle to its highest position. Raise the presser foot. Remove the bobbin cover plate by pushing the release button to the right. Insert the bobbin, making sure the bobbin rotates counterclockwise when pulling the thread. Put your finger on the bobbin, pull the thread to the left and through the notch, making sure the thread runs between the bobbin case and the tension disc. Then, pull the thread towards the back of the machine and replace the bobbin cover. Threading. Your machine is very easy to thread. Just follow these steps to thread the machine correctly. First, raise the needle to its highest position by turning the hand wheel toward you. Continue turning it toward you until the needle slightly begins to go down again. This will raise the take-up lever to its highest position. Raise the presser foot lifter. This is important because by raising the presser foot lifter, the tension disc is released so that the thread will go into the tension properly. Place the thread on the spool pin and secure it with the spool pin cap. If the thread spool has a groove on the edge, place this end to the right so your thread doesn't get caught whilst sewing. Bring the thread through the upper thread guides like this. Thread the tension by leading the thread with your left hand down the right channel and then up the left channel. Bring the thread downward and then slip it behind the horizontal thread guide and then the needle clamp guide located just above the needle. For model 4411, thread the needle manually by pushing the thread through the eye of the needle from front to back. For model 4423, see Automatic Needle Threader. To make sure you have threaded the machine correctly, refer to thread tension. Bringing up the bobbin thread. Before you start sewing, you will need to raise the bobbin thread. To do this, hold the upper thread with your left hand. Turn the hand wheel toward you, which will lower and then raise the needle. It is important that the hand wheel moves forward or toward you, not backward or away from you. As you turn the hand wheel, lightly pull the needle thread. The bobbin thread will be drawn up through the hole. If your bobbin thread doesn't want to pull up through this hole on your machine, make sure the bobbin thread isn't caught. After pulling up the bobbin thread, place both threads under the presser foot toward the back and replace the bobbin cover. Thread tension. This is the thread tension dial. For most sewing projects, you can set the dial to four. Correct tension is important for good sewing. When you sew, thread accumulating on the underside of the fabric 
is an indication that the upper threading path of the machine is not threaded correctly. Remove the fabric from the machine and try this simple test. Remove the thread completely from the machine. Be sure the presser foot lifter is in the up position. Rethread the upper thread, leaving the needle unthreaded. Leave the presser foot up, then pull the thread toward you. It should pull freely. Now, put the presser foot lifter down and try pulling the upper thread toward you again. It should resist the pulling and you should feel a significant difference in the tension. If you are still able to pull the thread freely when the presser foot is down, repeat this process. Stitch Selection Your machine has a variety of basic sewing stitches from which to choose. This is the pattern selector dial on the 4411. This is the pattern selector dial on the 4423. Always make sure your needle is in the highest position when turning the pattern selector dial. It can be turned to the left or to the right to select a stitch. Stitch length. This is the stitch length dial. It allows you to adjust the distance between the stitches. Stitch width. This is the stitch width dial. It allows you to adjust the width of the stitches. Needle positions. This is the needle position dial. It allows you to sew in the left, center and right needle position. Reverse sewing. This lever lets you sew in reverse. This is the pressure dial. The presser foot pressure of the machine has been preset and doesn't require any manual adjusting for most fabrics. However, for very thin fabrics, the presser foot pressure may be loosened by turning the screw counterclockwise. For heavy fabrics like sewing on denim or canvas, you may tighten the presser foot pressure by turning the dial clockwise. Straight stitch. Straight stitch is the most frequently used utility stitch. For straight stitching, use the general purpose foot. Select straight stitch with a stitch length of 2.5. Ensure the width selection dial is on zero. Place the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot and slowly start sewing. After a few stitches, Press the reverse sewing lever and sew a few stitches. Release it and continue sewing. At the end of your seam, repeat the reverse sewing action. Raise the needle to its highest position. Pull the fabric toward the back and cut the thread with the machine's thread cutter. Zigzag stitch. Snap on the general purpose foot. Select the solid looking zigzag stitch. Change the stitch length to approximately 3 and the stitch width to 4. Select center needle position. The zigzag stitch is used for finishing or overcasting raw fabric edges to prevent the fabric from fraying. The presser foot must be placed along the fabric so the needle stitches along the left side of the fabric while overcasting the right raw fabric edge. The zigzag also looks great when used as decorative satin stitch. Simply select a short stitch length for satin stitching. For creating special effects, you can also adjust the stitch width while sewing. Other utility stitches and their applications. Multi-stitch zigzag. Snap on the general purpose foot. Select the zigzag second on the right from the straight stitch. Change the stitch width to approximately 4 to 5 with a stitch length of 2. Select center needle position. The multi-stitch zigzag is ideal for attaching elastic or overcasting. It's also perfect for darning tears. Reduce the stitch length for darning.